For question 44 from the homework, it's asking when 0.1 grams of zinc solid reacts with 60 milliliters of HCl in a coffee cup calorimeter, all the zinc reacts and the temperature of that solution goes from 23 to 25 degrees Celsius. Given the following reaction, one mole of zinc will react with two moles of HCl to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. They would like you to calculate the enthalpy change for that reaction in joules per mole. And assume that the density of the solution is very close to water, one gram per milliliter, and that there's no change in volume during the course of the reaction. So what we need to do is calculate how much energy the water absorbed to go through that two degree temperature change. And then once we can figure out that much energy that the water absorbed, we need to now apply that to how much zinc was in this reaction. So the first step is we need to find the energy that water absorbed in this reaction. And then once we can figure that out, well, then we know that that water gained energy from the reaction of zinc. We can then find out how much energy the zinc released when it reacted with the HCl. So for the first calculation, we need Q equals MC delta T. So Q is my energy that I'm looking for, my mass. Well, I've got 60 milliliters of water, and I know 60 milliliters of HCl, that has a density very close to water, one gram per milliliter. I know for every one milliliter of water, I need one gram. So I have 60 grams of water. And the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram times degrees Celsius. And my temperature change is 2 degrees Celsius. So I multiply that together to find that the energy that the water absorbs during the course of this reaction is somewhere on the order of 502.08 joules. That's how much energy the water absorbed. Well, in order for the water to absorb this much energy during the course of the reaction, right, zinc needed to release this much energy. So Q for the water, right, would be 502 joules, right? That means the Q for the reaction needs to be negative 502 0.08 joules. That means when the zinc reacted with the HCl during this reaction, it released 502 joules of energy. But we want to find that in terms of joules per mole. So now, the next step and the last step of this calculation, we need to find use energy to find joules per mole. So I have 0.1 grams of zinc in the reaction. The atomic weight of zinc is 68, 65.38 grams per mole. So I know that if I have one mole of zinc, I need 65.38 grams. So I have approximately 0.00153 moles of zinc. So just taking a look at the units, right? I need joules per mole. Well, here I have joules, and here I have moles. So to find the delta H of the reaction, I'm gonna simply divide the energy by how many moles I have in this reaction. So if I divide a 502.8 joules by 0 0.00153 moles of zinc, I can find the delta H of the reaction to be approximately 3.28 e to the 5 joules per mole. And again, it's a negative because the calorimeter absorbed this much energy the calorimeter absorbed that much energy because the reaction lost that much energy. 
that's what I was saying when we were doing, doing calorimetry is that the hardest part about calorimetry is the numbers often that you're looking at, we have to flip the sign because we observed an increase in temperature because the calorimeter absorbed that energy. The calorimeter absorbed that energy because the reaction lost that reaction. So we had to change the sign from a positive 502 to a negative 502 joules. Then to find the heat of reaction, we had to divide how many moles were actually in the reaction by the energy that was changed during the course of that reaction to get an approximate delta H for this reaction of negative 3.28 e to the 5 joules per mole. And if we were to put that into kilojoules, right, that would be about 328 kilojoules per mole, which is on order of most of the reactions we've looked at so far. But probably the step that, that was a tricky step for most of you was flipping the sign on the heat that was transferred during the course of that reaction. So hopefully this tutorial helps.